forward. Um, so it's certainly possible, and, and I think we, we want, we need all hands on deck. So that's not going to happen unless we have researchers, we have nonprofit organizations, and governments creating the enabling environment for that work. Exactly. So just to put it on our, for our work uh, to have uh, to some clear recommendations that maybe we have the right targets on the macro level, but we need national plans and regulations that can actually enable us to put this uh, out there in the right environment. Absolutely. And a sense of ownership at the national level, level of integrating those plans, but also for every project, I think we're moving towards a place where, for example, in Canada, there was just a, a tender for a clean energy project that had 25% community ownership. Yeah. So it's not just about these, these development systems that are trying to get these projects on the ground for the energy we all need, but doing so in a way that's empowering the community. Fantastic. So, uh, Enrique Auji, I'm also a Spanish uh, representative here, and we are very glad to be here in Spain. It's a fantastic history. If you look at the energy price in Spain now, it's 0 0.01 euro per energy bill. It's almost the electricity in now. And one, because you want to have the green grid, but also because there's so much renewable energy here now. And you want to scale up, you can do more, but there are some constraints on it. Uh, can you deliver a tell us something about that? Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, the, the interesting thing here with the electricity sector, uh, and it happens, I think, uh, in all Europe, uh, it's more or less the same. It's like the Aesop's fable, uh, you know, the, the tortoise and the, and the hare. So, uh, in terms of uh, uh, renewable generation, we are in her. We are running very fast. But uh, in terms of uh, you know, like defining the demand, we are like like, like, like a turtle, like a tortoise. Uh, it's, it's, uh, so what is happening? Here? The, the Lima rear are uh, grids, basically. So grids are uh, the thing that uh, are creating this this uh, this bottom. Wow. <laughs> Please, speaking out of grids. <laughs> That's a very moment. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> so, uh, the idea, the idea that I want to, 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 you know, to highlight here is that it's really uh, urgent to change uh, the mindset of all the regulatory authorities in Europe. I think not in Europe, in most countries, because the mindset of the regulatory authorities are you need to um, avoid the overinvestment of grids because the overinvestment of grids implies that you are going to invest too much and, and, the, and we don't want to do that. This is a typical mindset of the regulatory authority in most countries. Uh, right now, in this situation, in which it's really urgent to electrify the demand, the situation is the opposite. Underinvestment is by far much worse than overinvestment. So we need to change more or less the, the, the rules that we are playing. Basically, for example, in terms of ports, we need to think about ports like a strategic infrastructure with a kind of fast lane to do things differently. Taking into account that ports are very complicated because uh, each port has their own context, their own, their own legislation, concessions. So it's not just one thing for one country, it's, it's one thing for each location. A port is like a city, so it's huge. So uh, what is important here is to try to uh, find a special treatment, a special uh, you know, regulatory way to look at the ports in order to speed up this, this certification process. This is a very, you know, point brings us back to the main agenda of G20, energy security, and, and, and the ocean, and the ports are back in, in the center stage. Moving away from coal plants and gas plants inland, we are back to the ocean, uh, with the ports actually being the center stage of energy security. Uh, but, I mean, it's, it's a capex thing, it's a costly investment. Um, is it the government that are going to invest, or companies are going to invest that they don't get the degree that the government that, that they're going to Exactly. Uh, the thing is that uh, uh, even though we, we would love to, to, to 
invest in it because uh, it's really it's an energy hub, as I was saying, uh, for energy companies, it's the right place to be. Uh, the, the main issue is that we can uh, we, we need a change of, of regulation in order to speed up. And, and also, uh, I think it's also important to understand that each situation is different. That's why uh, we are trying, as a private company, to, to foster uh, some kind of alliance with all the value chain. Uh, uh, I think you are doing almost the same in certain, certain uh, countries. We are doing exactly that in, in certain things. For example, we have in Spain Net Zero C Alliance in order to push that uh, in this environment. And we started as, as a leader of the, of the alliance and two years uh, after that we decided to be just a regular member because we don't want to take any advantage of that. We want the right uh, scenario to invest basically. And we are doing exactly the same other uh, context, for example, uh, with uh, the, the the heritage transport. We have an alliance in Spain and we are going to sign an alliance in a, a European level in October. So we are working in this kind of idea because each situation is different. You need uh, situations that are common for all European countries or even in the US, uh, but uh, uh, the Spanish situation is different and each port is different as well. So what, that's why what we are trying to do. I mean, I have no time for turtles, so we have uh, turtles, we have uh, both of their hairs, and, and collaboration is the fast track, because we can set standards while we wait for it. And the iPhone was not built by governments or the UN, it was built by a company, then it became a standard, you know, it, it, that's the way to go. So, I think that's a very clear recommendations here, and uh, Alexander, to take with us to our uh, Ocean Country Dialogues coming up. And with that, I think we'll give that this panel a big hand because we're on Brazilian time, we are on time. <laughs>
uh, I want to thank Alexander because Alexander was one of the main uh, 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 professors to uh, to give us some understanding about scientific stuff about plastic pollution in Brazil. And afterwards, uh, we have been working directly with companies. And one of the companies here is IGEA, a water and a sanitation utility, private sanitation utility in Brazil. And so uh, we'll talk about it. And not only you, Rebecca, was with your boss, but Axel was my former boss. Yes. Axel and I, Axel and I worked together for eight years. Yes. Advocating, advocating for sanitation and fresh water in Brazil for eight years, but now we are separately put together, right? Yeah, we are separately put together. Well, uh, the Blue Keepers project um, is, as I mentioned, focused on reducing glass pollution. And uh, right now, next week, uh, we're going to launch uh, a Brazilian uh, waste inventory. Uh, that is a, a platform, an online platform, dedicated uh, to understand how the, the marine leaders are found on beaches in Brazil. So we, we, we were uh, with uh, 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 several people working on a uh, uh, marine uh, leader pickup in, th in 35 cities in Brazil. And, uh, and now we have this inventory to understand what kind of items are the most present and what are the brands, what are the companies responsible for those items. Of course, today I'm not going to show you the brands, all right? It's not ethical, but I'm going to show you all the items found uh, in, this, uh, in this inventory uh, during this uh, marine litter pickup that happened last year in 35 cities. So uh, the video, uh, I'm not sure if the video is ready to show the video. Yeah, and you can uh, turn the, the, the volume down, totally. I don't need the volume of the video. You can turn it off, the, 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 the sound off, right? Thank you. Well, so this is the, the, the Brazilian inventory, so this is the platform. So we have all the samples uh, collected here. Uh, is a methodology developed in partnership with the UNESCO Chair of Sustainability uh, here thanks to Alexander Tula. So we can see the samples by municipalities for example, the southeast, the northeast of Brazil, how many samples we have uh, in our project. Uh, and uh, you, can, you, you can find more uh, 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 samples by region. Is it Portuguese? Sorry. Will be in English very soon. Uh, here you have, for example, the cities, the municipalities in the northeast of Brazil, and all the beaches that we have done the marine uh, uh, leader pickup. So you can also count by municipality as well. So we have here all the main municipalities in Brazil and how many samples we have done. Uh, so we have, for example, the name of the beaches and the city as well. Uh, so here is the name, name of the institutions that helped us, but uh, you. We can see also in islands. So we have uh, separated by islands. For example, in the southeast, the red bar is related to plastic pollution. So all the main uh, 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 island sound was related to plastic. So uh, we can found, for example, metal. We can found cardboard, paper. So they are very distributed and separated by islands and by region and by municipalities as well. So. Uh, over a hundred, for example, plastic found in a beach, on a beach, uh, on a beach in the southeast. So here are the other types of items found, is in Portuguese as well, but uh, it's all uh, related to plastic and the diversity of plastic. Uh, so here by the cities, so we can count the items by cities as well. And uh, this platform is very dynamic because the marine litter pickup will continue this year. So as we are on beaches with the organizations, we are uh, updating the, the, the platform. So those are the main uh, partners of the project. And uh, one of the, the main partners, IJ, is here, so I so I give you the floor to make some comments about the project and the relation between the ocean and sanitation in this case. Oh, thank you, thank you, Ruben. First of all, I'd like to, to thank uh, the Global Compact and Tuga for the UNESCO by this, this invitation. So it's an honor for us. Angea, as, as Ruben mentioned, Angea is the most important company in private sector in sanitation in Brazil. 
We attain nowadays 500 cities in the whole territory, uh, many of them on the coast. So we attain 31 million Brazilians now with potable water and sewage collection and treatment. So uh, two years ago, uh, the Global Compact in Brazil invited us to be part of the Blue Clippers project. And at that time, I was at my beginning in this company, and I asked people internally about ocean science. <laughs> what? Ocean? Oh, ocean is over there. So when I need to swim, maybe I go in the summer. So nothing about ocean. So it's the biggest company in sanitation. So as you can see, how distant is ocean from our daily life. So uh, Rubens uh, invited us to, to be part of the group keepers. So I convinced the directorate about that. So it's an honor for us nowadays to be part uh, uh, with uh, Coca-Cola and so one co companies. So nowadays we have six uh, coast cities as part of the Blue Keepers. So just in two years we collect more than 10,000 items to be part of this inventory, very important inventory. But I think the, the most important for us is to invite other companies. We know how companies, big companies think and accept very well. So if AJ is there, maybe it's something that is interesting to me. So, as Coca-Cola, for instance. So, our, our biggest objective now in Brazil is like different companies, different sectors to be part of this because even now, ocean is a different thing for us. So, we, we know, many of you know Brazil, 8.5 thousand kilometers of coast. We have hundreds of cities on the coast. But unfortunately, we have nowadays a poor sanitation system now. Uh, United Nations used to say that now we have 2 billion people without sanitation in the world. Many of this pollution comes from the rivers, you know. And when you don't have sanitation, many of these substances, dangerous substances, plastics and metals and, and paper and so on, arrives to the ocean. So it's a message to Tuha, how? Tuha? Okay, you. It's a message for you. We need to discuss the sanitation. I, may, I, 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 I used to participate of this kind of discussion, environmental discussion. In never I, I, I listened to the connection between sanitation and ocean. And 2 billion people producing sewage every day. And this sewage now are going to ocean, carry a lot of things, dangerous things. So, first of all, it's an honor to be part of the, the group keepers. I think it's a wonderful initiative in Brazil. I, I do believe that other countries or global compact in other uh, regions can do the same, the same kind of project, but also to provoke uh, the G20 about sanitation in many parts of the world. So I, I believe that we will do a good job if you can put to the agenda. Thank you. Just to, just to add something to like that so speech, uh, one of the items, one of the most uh, uh, important items that we found during this very uh, uh, year uh, was how to so we were no sé lo que dicen de mantenimiento, pero lo que han hecho es el bajar la luz. Porque si no ha habido un micro corte, no fue una solución todo, no solo la sala. No, no, se ha quedado todo el tiempo. Con el equipo de sonido, el proyecto, todo ha venido a funcionar. Ah, pues. Bueno, se va a dejar los micrófonos. Dime. Pedirte un favor, pero a ver qué tal tú sabes, estás ocupado. Y vas a ir abajo en la cafetería. Hay un proyecto, no tengo ni idea. Y para conectarlo con un programa de vida, ¿no? No es. no te puedo ayudar y aparte no tengo ni idea de la sala de abajo, no nos toca, ¿sabes? No, no, te preguntaba en ese sentido, vale. Eso. Te voy llamando al Albert, pero no me contesta. Ya, estamos igual. Vale. Y hace. es una hora que tendríamos salido por la puerta.
ya no sabes que está largo esto. Exacto. Espera, espera que tengo un pollo. Bueno, we are almost there. Do you remember what I said in the beginning? Yeah, a surprise. You couldn't forget that. I am not giving you a surprise. Who is giving you a surprise? It's Georgie, our friend. Up there. 